let's be honest. We know the real estate market is changing. Maybe that listing we have is sitting a little bit longer. Maybe we ran an open house. Nobody showed up. Maybe our buyer client got priced out and they no longer can afford a home. And so that scares us. And so what I covered with our team last night in an email, and I wanted to make a follow-up video so it makes a little bit more sense, is how can we still be successful as a real estate agent? What do we need to do to ramp up to help more people? Or maybe we're sitting here in October and we haven't closed a deal yet. Or we look back and we're like, wait a minute, I wanted to sell five homes. I've only sold two this year. So what can we do to be successful? What does it take? And so instead of letting the market happen to us, we need to impact the market and make it react to us. So instead of letting things happen to us, we need to take control. And instead of dialing back because maybe we're worried or we're scared, we need to ramp up. We need to increase our market share. If the real estate market does contract a little bit, I'd rather have a bigger presence. So when things go back up, I already have a better foothold in the market. And so coming back to that same question, what can we do to be successful? Or Zach, I haven't hit my goals yet. What do I do to get more clients? What do I do to sell more homes? Um, so today's what I want to talk about is the foundation of real estate. We wear so many hats as real estate agents. We have to worry about marketing and sales and negotiation. And there's so many things that we focus on that we forget the foundation of a successful real estate business. The foundation to move the needle, to help us get from point A to point B to hit our goals. What is that? What is that key factor? It's conversations. It doesn't matter if we sell 50 homes, two homes, 10 homes, all those agents that have sold that many homes, I guarantee the agent that sold 50 homes, they've had at least 50 conversations. They have to at least say, hey, what do you wanna list your house for? Hey, do you wanna accept this offer? What purchase price do you wanna offer? Conversations. We cannot avoid them. No matter what we do, you cannot sell a house without having a conversation. And so going back to building that solid foundation, when I first got started in real estate, I knew statistically around 10% of people move every single year. And so when I was driving to the gas station or driving to the grocery store, I would look at all the different neighborhoods that we were passing. And mentally, I was like, wait a minute, 10% of those homes we just passed are going to sell in the next 12 months. I just need to get in front of them. That's all I need to do. I need to have a conversation with those people. And so, or if you just came from Starbucks and you have a Starbucks drink in your hand, think back about Starbucks. There was probably 20 people sitting in there. What if you just bought a coffee for one of those people and just started a conversation? Hey, my name is Zach. Can I just buy you a cup of coffee today? Sure. Are you on your way to work today? Yeah. What do you do for a living? Just start the conversation. That's all it takes. 10% of people move. There's 20 people in that Starbucks location. Two of them are going to make a move in the next 12 months. Are you a part of different hobby groups? Start talking to those people. Uh, do your kids have a sporting event? Turn around and talk to the parents behind you. Have those conversations. We get so scared sometimes or in our head of, well, maybe they won't like me or maybe they'll judge me. Don't worry about that. Those aren't the people we want to work with anyways. We want to work with people that are similar minded to us, that know us, like us, and trust us. But we can't establish that if we don't talk to people. I want to work with people that are similar to me. I made every mistake in the book starting off in real estate. When I first got started, I door knocked because it was free. I didn't have a marketing budget and I didn't know anybody. We moved to a brand new state. We had no family there. I didn't have any friends to start, but I knew I could just go door knock. It's free. I'm a broke college graduate, ready to go. I'm hungry. Let's do this. Let's go talk to people. And so my script the first month was literally just knocking on the door and saying, Hey, my name is Zach. I'm a realtor. Have you ever thought of selling your house? That was it. So everybody was slamming the door in my face. Babies were crying. Dogs were barking. But I was having that conversation over and over and over. I made sure I hit 100 people a day door knocking. And within my first month, I got a listing because it, it actually works. No matter what, if your scripts are terrible, if you don't know how to talk to people, to close them, to overcome objections, that's okay. If you just have enough conversations, you're going to get a sale. You're going to hit that next level. And so obviously, as I kept going, I did get better. Uh, worrying about business card templates or flyers or my scripts or my negotiations. Those are things that can get us to the next level and slowly make adjustments and get us a little bit better. But the bulk of what moves the needle in our business is that conversation. If we never have that, we can't help the person. So I was looking the other day at how many people live in the Nashville metro area. And if you want to know a mind blowing statistic, so there's about 2 million people that live in Nashville's metro area. If you called 100 people a day, it would take you 55 years to talk to everybody at least once. 55 years to talk to everybody. So there is always somebody to talk to, no matter what. Again, think back of where you are on a daily basis. Can you spend 
an hour here, an hour there, just talking with people, just meeting with people, just networking with people. Because real estate is a 90 day cycle. If you're not where you're at today, success wise, or you haven't closed a home, look back 90 days ago. What were you doing? 30 days, 60 days, 90 days ago. It's a cycle in real estate. What you did back then impacts today. And what you do today impacts 90 days from now. So already, if you wanna build a successful quarter one of 2023, we need to be hustling today to get those conversations in. It's very easy to look at an agent's track record of, hey, we haven't sold anything yet. What were we doing 90 days ago? And we can see real estate falls through the cracks. It's not a priority. We have to help people. And so I would say as this market is shifting, don't worry about uh, our home prices crashing, uh, nobody selling anything, or my one client fell through and they can no longer afford a house. Instead of having just that one opportunity, I wanna to build to five opportunities. Hey, if my one buyer falls through, but I have four more searching for homes, I don't feel the impact as much. But if that's my only client and I've stopped prospecting, I've stopped having conversations because I'm just worried about that one person and things change for their situation, I feel that impact the most. So let's build up and have two, three, four more opportunities at bats ready to go so that way we don't feel the impact as much. Worry about the conversation. And the second step to building that successful business, once you're having those conversations, let's say you have one a day. Well, statistically, that would be 365 for an entire year. 10% of those would move in the next 12 months. So that's 36 opportunities. Let's say we only do 1%. We only can convert 1% of our conversations and that's okay. We all start somewhere. I started there. I was worse than 1% because I was just asking everybody, do you want to sell a house? And people didn't, uh, they didn't go with that. So if we have 1% conversion, but at least we've had a conversation every single day with people, we should get three to four deals a year. That could be roughly 36 to 48 grand a year selling the average homes just from having one conversation a day. Now, how do we get from the three to four deals a year to the 36 opportunities because we've been having that one conversation a day and there's a lot of opportunity in that but how do we go from that three or four to that 36 well the next part of building your successful business is conversations is the foundation and the framing would be following up with people 98 percent of your sales come from following up i know a really successful agent all they do is book their calendar with people in their database friends family people they just met just invite them for coffee lunch walk the park going to a sporting event. That's all they do is they book out their calendar every single day. I need to meet with one person and I need to have a conversation with one new person every single day. And that has paid off tremendously in their business. Other people that haven't wanted to go out there, they've done uh, Facebook hobby groups. They've joined different groups. They've added value. They continuously follow up with people in Facebook and they've closed several deals this year just from Facebook. So it doesn't matter how you do it, but we just have to have those at bats every single day. We need to be in front of the people every single day. And so following up is how you build the next stage of your successful business. The following, the final stage is going to be providing value. That's kind of the roof on the house you're building. This brick house you're building that it cannot be blown over, cannot be messed up. You are on the right path to success, providing value. That's the third and final step in your conversations, changing that from, hey, do you wanna buy or sell a house to how can I help you today? What's going on in life? Uh, can I help with this? Can I help you move? Uh, can I take you out for lunch? Can I, uh, whatever you gotta do, that's how you take it the next step further, is providing value. If I'm not where I wanna be today, it's because I haven't provided enough value with people. Everything else is just an objection. Everything else is a limiting belief. Well, what if, what if they say they don't like me or get lost or I'm not interested? Those aren't the people we wanna work with anyways. We want to work with people that we know, like, and trust. Our friend group, our sphere, those are the people we want to work with. So if people tell us that, that's okay. We get told that every single day growing our brokerage. Never. It's a scam. That won't work. But yet we continue to have those conversations over and over and over, and we put the other person first. That's the key point of our conversations is how can we help the agent? How can we help them become successful? What do we need to do, either training or coaching or tools or support, what can we do to take you to the next level? That's what we lead with because that's what we want. We want people to be successful. Everything else for us is secondary, but we need to help enough people get what they want so we can have everything we want. And so if you're talking with different homeowners, that's all I would look for. Just have a conversation. More and more people every single day.